Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. Uh, I want to apologize for not uploading the other day, but uh, had some commitments and no time to record and they overlapped, so didn't get one up. Um, I'll see what I can do about getting up a um, extra video or something, but yeah, we'll see. Um, so, where we left off last, we had just finished researching our engines, and now it is time to start some pre-production. So, having a look, I don't have any spare engines at all, so I'm going to switch to ship components, and I'm going to build some of these. So, I'm not going to be upgrading, so I'm going to build a, f a few. Well, I'm not going to be upgrading anytime soon, so I'm going to build a few commercials and a bunch of military. So commercials will bang out pretty quick because they're a fifth the cost and the other ones will come out eventually. So we shall continue on. There. Okay. Oh, all right. So, what's just happened is that Mark Harrison jumped through from per jumped through the waypoint for Earth and connected it to Melbourne. Uh, oh, sorry, Perth and then to Melbourne. So. I'll show you how that works. Where is it? It is... Here we go. It's just a number. Okay, so as you can see, Perth is System 19, and Melbourne is System 188. Alright, so when, my, when the Aronson explored through the way through the web or through the jump point uh unexplored jump point coming out of perth what happened was that the system rolled um a random number now obviously it's outside the range of 10 or 15 that we set up as a local cluster so it missed the local cluster chance but it still ended up rolling one a system 188 so from perth to system 188 because system 188 exists and it doesn't matter what it's named because you know it's your naming convention and the and NPRs and stuff have their own naming conventions but because it rolled system 188 and system 188 already exists what it did was it created a link to the already existing system so if we go to Melbourne now you'll see that it has a third jump point where previously it only had two so because of this it is entirely possible for an alien an NBR who, who's doing exploring to suddenly create a jump point that leads back into one of your own systems um, but as it stands Let's see if this is actually giving us any kind of benefit. So from Melbourne, solar seven point so Perth is eight point four, seven point five. Not even at all. So that has provided no benefit whatsoever. Yeah, that's provided no benefit whatsoever. It's completely worthless jump link because the distance between Seoul and Perth through Adelaide is less than between Seoul and Perth through Melbourne. So, completely worthless link. However, um, that does bring us closer to Wollongong. So, um, if we expand through Wollongong, it'll be faster to go through Melbourne from Perth than it will be to go through Adelaide from Perth. Um, 
and it is possible that this link will be shorter in certain circumstances. However, that does mean that Perth is a dead end, which makes it absolutely wonderful for expansion, because we know that any enemy trying to get to it has to come through Adelaide. Um, because, so we're going to have a, col a colony in Newcastle, um, which means that whatever colony we come through here, if we put a... Um, if we put a... Um, colony there that will observe the system, then we can effectively make Perth completely safe. Um, but obviously, we're going to have to colonize at least Hobart as well to block off this channel. So, yeah, it's still vulnerable, but it's a lot less vulnerable than some of the other systems, especially some of the more forward facing ones. Do we still have an unexplored in Seoul? Let's check real quick. We do! Huh. Okay. Better go explore it then. <laughs> TG2 is surveying Perth. Why is TG2 surveying Perth? Hmm. Weird. Oh well. Um. And what? Fuel's getting low and maintenance is getting high. I'm going to send it home. Now I'm going to test something real quick, because uh, somebody made a comment in the last video that um, if you don't remove these, then it will matter once it actually hits refit. So we shall see, or oh, overhaul, not refit. We'll see. Confirm it one way or the other. So switch back to Sol. Now. We are starting to get a number of civilian ships as well, so what I'm going to do is, because I know that they are working happily, I'll go ahead and actually turn them off. Now, hide civilian ship names, as you can see, makes the names disappear, but they still actually exist. So you'll notice the combat squad is now all the way up here, and there's a giant gap, which can throw you off. So what you need to do is select here, no civilian. And that will actually get rid of them. So you see Combat Squad that actually dropped, it, dropped down there. Um, so this is the one you want to use. Not necessarily this one. Um, you can also filter out races as well. So yes. Okay. <clears throat> Let's keep going. And we're going to be watching it to come from Adelaide. The camera five is rested. And it's still on overhaul. Yeah, it's gonna be coming through Adelaide. Hmm. I came through Melbourne. Oh well, that's right. Automated mine construction is complete. How many mines do we have on Earth now? 193. Better get seven more. Run that off nicely. And we're now working on building engines. Um, for both of them, which is excellent. Oh no, he's not going. Hmm. 
Which one was it? PG2. Okay, now he's still in path. Okay. Civilian freighters. Okay, TG3 is done with Newcastle. We do have some jump points there. Let's go find out what's the other way, though. And uh, we will... Hmm. We will send it back home because we're going to need to upgrade their engines in a bit anyway. Alright, here's TG2. Uh, finish the research lab. We will put it here. Rockhampton, where there is nothing. Hmm. So we have... Ah, that's coming out of Seoul. Okay. We're getting a few empty systems. We've got four so far, which is kind of annoying. Oh, it's got to have, has arrived, have arrived Earth a bit already. Yep, okay. Looks like it was correct. And, yeah, so you don't have to clear them. Um as well interrupt during the overhaul. Alright, reload rate 4 is done. Can we get a decent missile launcher yet? Ten seconds for a size 1 launcher. That'll do. That will do. Okay, and 15 seconds is not bad either for the reduced size, so we're going to use that one. But 40 seconds is too much, so we're going to use this one. And uh, there we go. And we also need, well, we'll figure it out once we actually have our missiles. Because we're going to need uh, our uh, attack missile design as well eventually. But I don't know yet whether I'm doing, going to do a size 4, size 6, or size 8 missile. Um, depends on what kind of other tech we've got. It'll probably be a size 6 because we have Magneto Plasma, which means that uh, we can probably get a size 6 missile up to a decent speed. But, uh, yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Um, is there anything that we still need for raw missile production? No. Let's design some missiles then. Okay. So, first and foremost, we need our AMM. So, we're going to do point 0.2 warhead. And we're going to do... Because we need at least one damage, otherwise the missile's useless, right? Um, we don't need very much fuel, 
that, uh, let's go for 0 0.005 fuel. So that's 12 and a half units of fuel because we don't need much range either. Um, we do need a fair amount of agility. So let's go for 0.2, no, that's not going to be much, 245 agility. Okay, so that means we have 0.55 MSP space for engines. So we'll go for missile engines. We need maximum possible speed for anti-missile missiles. And we're going to go for 0.45. There we are. So it'll be a 1.44 EP uh, engine. So we will create that. I'm going to need somebody to research it, so let's get... He's going to finish first. Ah, same time. Okay, might as well give it to him. Actually, I might as well give it to the guy who has the most power, um, because it's a power propulsion, not a missile. So I'll give it to him because he has the most. Okay. Um, all right, next, we are going to want a decent damage. So a good place to start for missiles is 212. Um, but we can reduce this. So we want a square number, we want a 9, so we'll do it 1.87. Uh, I got 1.8, so 1.8 will give us a 9, it'll also give us a little bit more room. Um, fuels capacity can stay at 1 for now. Um, agility, let's see if we can do something better. 32. So we've got 37 maneuver, maneuver rating with 2 agility. 35 with 0 0.8, 32 with 0 0.5. So we can probably get more speed and effective value out of that extra space in terms of engine rather than agility. So 32 is fine. And for the active sensor, we're going to use 0 0.1 with a resolution of 100. So this will let us let, let, the, let the missile automatically target new targets uh, up to 110,000 kilometers away which is extremely, extremely useful. Um, yeah, that ain't bad. So now we need engine. So, I'm gonna go for missile engines. We're still gonna go with times four. This isn't too bad because when you have an engine this big, your fuel use is actually remarkably reasonable. So, we've got 4.47, 1 point, shit, how much space do I need? One point five three. Okay, 3 will take it to 50, 5 will take it to 5, and 1 will take it to 6. So 1.53 engine, engine, and that will get us a, um, a decent anti-ship missile. So we will create that. And we'll give that to him as well, because why not? Um, 0.8.5 there, that's easy enough to remember, so we'll move along. Or alternatively, we can just get those now. There. 
Rock Hampton go and found a new jump point. All right, and AMM missile is done. And the size 6 missile is done. Okay. So. It was 1 1.8, 1.5, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 100. There we go. Alright, so how does that work? So we got... <clears throat> it's, it's a reasonable missile. Could be a lot better, but we got we're getting nine damage out of it. Uh, we got a okay speed out of it. We got decent range, um, and we've got um, accuracy. Here we go. So three Ks is one hundred and thirty, which is fantastic. At five K speed, it's got an eighty-five percent accuracy um, with crew grade bonuses that should go up to maybe about get, getting closer to ninety. Um, I think at this stage, anything we run into is going to be running at around sixty-seven. So we're going to be getting a probably a good fifty to sixty percent accuracy on these. So considering they're only magneto plasma and and they are nine damage. And I did basically pull them out of my hat. Um, that's not that's not that not that bad a missile. Uh, obviously, more speed would be nicer. It would be great if we could get it up to say 20k. Um, but um, yeah, no, that's fine. Whenever it's dropped to 26, which is a little bit more annoying, but. Oh well. Okay, so we have ourselves a size 6, so we are going to create a new series. We're going to call it ASM 6. Actually, and I'm going to create a new one called ASM 6. Hmm. Actually, no. I was going to split off into long range missiles, but no, not right, not now. Okay, so. What shall we call it? We shall call it um, the arrow because it's a relatively low tech miss long range missile. There we go. All right, so that has set the arrow to as to this series. So you won't see it because it doesn't actually appear until you've finished researching it. But um, what the series allows it to do is that if, for example, uh, we have a ship that's designed to use the arrow, and we tell it to load the arrow, but there aren't any arrows available. But there is another missile in the same series available, it will load that missile uh, instead. So basically, it'll still try for whatever it was designed for, but it will load whatever is in the series if it can't find any, uh, and if it, can find, if it can find some of those. So that is that. Um, have we designed our... There's the arrow, so now we need the our little size one buddy. So there we are. So we need 0 0.2 warhead, 0 0.05 fuel. Uh, we're not going to use any sensor because it's going to get guidance all the way anyway. And we've got. Was that it? Yeah, I guess. Oh well. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Um, most missiles are going to be doing more than 20k, so we are going to have reduced accuracy against it. Um... And the range is kind of crap. Still good enough, but kind of crap. Uh, so, yeah, that'll have to do.
so we're going to call it um, AM1. We're going to have to rework this pretty soon anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, I'm just going to name it, you know, generic names. Okay, so we've got our missile stuff. This guy's going to get finished soon, so we're going to have him fin research the arrow and the AMM-1 and the Patriot AMM launcher. And we've got size 6 missiles now that we know, so launchers size 6. And mm, at the kind of range of the ASM that, that our um, anti-ship missile has, 225 should be fine. So we will create this and queue it up. There we go. So now we just need to reassign those labs and wait. More civilian mining complex. Okay. Luna has completed terraforming and it is wonderful and habitable. And it looks like um, our civilian shipping has already begun moving people there. Uh, they probably became moving people a little while ago because I don't think we've actually needed this much terraforming. Yeah, it's 14, which means it became habitable a little while ago. Um, but now it's a absolutely lovely temperature. So we've got people there now, which is beautiful. Um, it's only producing infrastructure, but um, that will soon change. Mars is... Slowly getting there. <clears throat> okay. Now let's move our terraforming fleet and we're going to move it to Mars. So, there's our tug. And we are going to go to Perry. We're going to tractor up. We are going to fly to Mars. And release tracks chips. There we go. Um, where's our civilian team? Oh, looks like they're already at Mars. Probably moved them earlier. Yeah, looks still haven't finished. Okay. <clears throat> Wow, that thing's fast. Okay, and we'll go back home. Okay. So Mars has the terraforming. Yes. Excellent. So, once again, oxygen at point one. Save. And let's keep moving. Another colony ship. Antonio Betty is shore leaved. Ah, let's see how all of our. So, Canberra 5, that's in Seoul. That's under overhaul. Mark Aronson. Mm. 
he's exploring. <clears throat> overhaul and overhaul. So as I finish the overhaul, I'm going to rip their engines out and replace them. So that's fine. Actually, that reminds me, I need to retool. Or oh, have I already retooled? <clears throat> no, I need to retool. We need the Grimsby. Okay. <clears throat> need River 2. Do I have them actually designed? Yeah, I do have them designed. Um, but am I happy with them? So, River 2, 16,000, decent speed. Still got all the gas starts. Yeah, that's fine. And. Oh, Sydney. There we go, Melbourne. Um, yes, I have reworked both of them. All right, excellent. Retool for River 2 and Melbourne 2. Might well retool all of these. Birmingham to Birmingham 2. County to ah oh. now county to tug Amphion to Amphion two Collins to Collins well Collins is fine and Sydney to Sydney two so they'll finish the tooling slowly um, over the next uh, year with two of them. But that will let us refit our fleets. So we're going to burn through a fair amount of neutronium, but not that much. And we have an absolute metric buttload of it. So it's not going to hurt to tool and have multiple um, shipyards for individual classes. Alright, we're going to get a missile soon. Got a new lab. Yeah, give it to the missile guy. All right, construct. All right, automated mines is up. Missile reload rate is done. I'm gonna have to give him something so it doesn't waste any extra research points. So let's give it a rate of um. Let's get some ordnance production. Because we need that. And we'll get another stage of warhead. Okay. I'm going to get a salvage module next, which is wonderful. Bingo. There we go. Need the next one next. Do need the cryo drops and um, proof cargo handling system. Okay. Retooling complete for Birmingham two. All right, arrow is complete. AMM1 is complete. And so is the Patriot launcher. We need a size 6 launcher as well. 
shore leave is done. How are you doing for time? Bit over, but I'll let you have it. Um, okay, so that is the size 6 and camera squid overhaul. So that is all the tech we need to get, get make ourselves some missile ships. So I'm going to tease you a bit. I'm going to make a cut. And in the next episode, we're going to design and start construction of our missile boats. So I will see you then.